So welcome to the screencast about domains and ranges of functions, and along the way we're going to talk about interval notation as well. So in the first two screencasts about functions, part one and two, uh, we mentioned that the domain of a function uh, is the set of all the inputs that allow us to get outputs. The set of uh, all the inputs, I'm going to make this informal, a set of all inputs that work, quote unquote. And that can mean a lot of different things. Uh, we will see what exactly that means. But it's a set of all inputs that I can actually put into my function and get something out of it. And the range of a function is the set of outputs uh, that I can get, that can be obtained. So what does that mean exactly? Well, let's take a look at what this exactly means by looking at some formulas here. Uh, so let's start with a form with a function f of x equals x minus one. Okay, very simple function. I put in the x, and how I get output from the input is I take the input and subtract one from it. Now, what's the domain of this function? What are the inputs that work in here? It's helpful to ask this question kind of in the negative. Are there any inputs, any x's, so that there's some sort of problem with subtracting one. Is there any x value out there that I simply can't subtract one from for some mathematical reason? And the answer is no. Uh, so the domain, uh, there's no x's that fail if I try to load them into this function. All x's work in that sense. So the domain would be the set of uh, all uh, real numbers that I can choose. Okay, there's no number outside the domain. We're going to save discussion of range for a little while. Well, let's mix this function up a little bit. We're going to change this, and I'll change my color here to uh, a red. So I'm going to create a function now called g, and it's going to be equal to the square root of x minus 1. Okay, so now what's the domain of all of this function here? Well, notice now it's not all real numbers. Okay, not all real numbers work. For example, if I put in zero, for instance, what's g of zero? Well, as we saw before, that's uh, just replace the x with a zero, and this gives me square root of negative one, and that, uh, that's not a real number. So zero is not in the domain. What exactly is the problem here? Are there, the, the problem comes in where I might have x's that make this negative. So if, uh, well, let me say it this way. The domain of the function would be all real numbers x that make x minus 1 bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, these are the x's that work. As long as I keep the x minus 1 larger than or equal to 0, I can take its square root. But if the x minus 1 is less than 0, I cannot take its square root. So this domain is not all real numbers. It's only a portion of the real numbers, namely the, one, the real numbers x that make this inequality, uh, that solve this inequality. Now another way to say this is to simply to solve the inequality and write x bigger than or equal to 1. So the domain of this function is all x values bigger than or equal to 1. Those are the inputs that work, that give me some sort of computable output. So I cleaned up the screen here and I have uh, just a reminder, our f of x, when f of x was x minus 1, the uh, domain of that function was the set of all real numbers. Uh, g of x equal to radical x minus 1, the domain was, a, was were all x's uh, bigger than or equal to 1. Let's try uh, one more here. Uh, and let's define a function h of x equal to 1 over x minus 1. Okay, any problems with uh, x values here? Uh, well, a lot of x values work. Uh, for example, x equals 0 works just fine. h of 0 um, would be 1 over 0 minus 1, and that's negative 1, no problem there. But the big problem you will encounter with this function is that uh, if the denominator is zero, we got a problem. Okay, so I can choose, I can choose any uh, real number of value for x that I like as long as x is not equal to one. Because if x is equals one, equal to one, I've got a zero in the denominator. So the domain is a set of all numbers x so that x is not equal to one. Okay, so in finding domains of functions, we basically look for potential problems and uh, screen them out and write these as inequalities or just as descriptions. We're going to talk just a second now about a way of writing these, uh, these uh, inequalities and sets of numbers called interval notation. Uh, the interval is just a special kind of uh, set notation. I'll write this down here. 
An interval just refers to a piece of the uh, x-axis or potentially or possibly y-axis. Here we're going to talk about the x-axis. So um, in interval notation, we use either square brackets like this on the left or the right, parentheses like this on the left or the right, or some combination of both. Um, what we do with intervals is we specify a starting point, say a, comma, and then an ending point. For example, um, the inequality, all the x values that sit between negative 3 and 2, for example, uh, I would write that as bracket, square bracket, negative 3, comma, 2. That's what this, that's a square bracket right there, not a parenthesis. The square brackets mean I include the endpoints. Include the endpoints. Now, if I meant to write the inequality x less than strictly bigger than 3 or strictly less than 2 and not including those endpoints, I would use uh, parentheses, rounded parentheses. So the rounded parentheses means do not include the endpoints. The uh, square ones mean do include the endpoints. And I can mix these up as well if I wanted to think about the uh, inequality uh, x bigger than or equal to negative 3 but strictly less than 2, I would write it like this round that off. So we can take all these domains, which are really just uh, descriptions of uh, numbers, and write them as intervals. Okay, let me get rid of this stuff over here, and we'll do so. So let's look at the second one first, uh, where I have uh, the domain of this function was x bigger than or equal to negative 1. How would I write that? Well, um, the smallest that x can be is 1, and the biggest that x can be, that's not specified. So we're going to let x be as big as we want by putting an infinity on here. So it's all those numbers between 1 and infinity. I do want to include 1, so I'm going to put a square bracket on that. Infinity is not a number, so I can't include it. So I'm going to put a round bracket on that. So this inequality and this interval mean the same thing. We're going to prefer the interval notation. The set of all real numbers, uh, then there's no definite starting point. There's no definite stopping point. So that's what that interval would look like here. Um, now, x, all the, the set of all x is not equal to 1. That would look like this. Um, I can take all x values up to but not including uh, 1. And then all x values, not including 1, but going as high as I like. And I want to join them together. So I'm going to use this little u symbol right here. That means, uh, that's called a union. So this means all the x values from negative infinity to 1, not including 1. Not include 1, but then go as high as you like. And that's how we might write these domains as interval notation. So one last look at domain and range here. This time, going back to this function we saw earlier uh, in screencast number two on functions, it was given as a graph. So what's the uh, domain here? Well, the domain consists of all the uh, numbers that give us outputs. That will be every x value that has a graph attached to it. And we saw earlier that was from 0 to 3, including 0 and including x equals 3. Uh, this little blue segment here is sort of like a projection on this graph, sort of like a shadow onto the uh, x-axis. And then from 4 all the way out to 7, but not including 7, because 7 did not have uh, an output of values attached to it. So how would I write that in interval notation? Well, the domain of this function in interval notation would start at 0 right here, proceed all the way up in an unbroken way to 3, and I include 0 because it's got an output, so a square bracket. I'm going to include uh, 3 because it's got an output, another square bracket. Then it leaves off and picks up again at 4 and continues on in an unbroken way to 7. But I'm not going to include 7. I want to round bracket that one. I do include 4 because it had an output. And now I want these two things together, so I'm going to union them like this. And that's how I'd write the domain of this function in interval notation. Now, the range of this function uh, we saw was a, a quite a bit more. It's, we, the range is the outputs, and we can get all, this little, all the way down to 2. And it looks like every output value uh, from 2 up to 4 is obtained. But also, 2 all the way up to 8 is obtained. So that's just one single unbroken piece of real estate on the y-axis. So the range here... Uh, is to simply bracket, z uh, sorry, bracket negative 2 to 8. Okay, no breaks. And just one last thing to mention here, uh, oftentimes it's the easiest way to get the range of a function is to convert it into a graph and just read it off visually like you see here. There's some algebra ways to do it too, uh, but you might want to try converting to a graph first. It's fairly easy to read off.